John William Scott enjoyed fame after starring in American Pie. It was like he had the world in his palms. For a decade after the 1990 film was released, Scott was everywhere. But have you heard of him now? It's not like he said goodbye to the entertainment industry, but around 2010, Scott pretty much vanished from the screens. Let's find out why Hollywood won't cast Scott anymore in this video. First off, he failed to add diversity to his roles. Scott achieved success and got famous very early in his career, mainly because of his role in American Pie. But many critics believe that this film turned out to be his worst enemy. While the actor was still in his 20s, he was great at playing roles similar to Steve Stifler, so much so that his fans started stereotypically associating every college-going, party-loving jock role with him. The hype was real, but it was pretty clear that this kind of fame wouldn't last long. Scott understood this and even tried to explore different roles. By the time he did that, it was already too late. His stereotyped image was enough to cost these movies a lot and probably became the main reason why no one in Hollywood was ready to cast him, and he was sent off. Up next, his personal issues are another big reason for his absence. In 2011, everyone was talking about the Stifler actor entering rehab. TMZ revealed that Scott had voluntarily signed up in a treatment facility for his personal issues and deteriorating mental health. We still don't know precisely why he went there, but many assume it was because he suffered from alcoholism and drug addiction. He stayed there for a whole month and later carried on with shooting American Pie 4 American Reunion. He has never talked about what he was going through publicly, but we know from his many interviews that he isn't someone who likes socializing or partying. In short, he's a different person and is nothing like Stifler from the 1999 movie. Many believe that his personality and social choices were why he decided to stay out of sight. And it isn't about who casts him or not. We can't say much about that. But yes, that is in fact a possibility. Next up, the flop film Bulletproof Monk. Believe us or not, this all started in 2003. When the actor appeared in the film Bulletproof Monk, the movie was a flop and even struggled to make back its own budget. While making a profit was out of the question. Many people don't even know about this film, but it significantly did set back the actor's career. The film being a flop was one thing. Scott himself made another big mistake as well. During an interview, the actor revealed that he performed all the stunts himself and had to get martial arts training to be able to do so. This ended up as negative marketing for the film, and critics picked on this comment. The reviewers went all about it and actually diminished the fight choreography. The comments called it millisecond cuts or chopped into scores of little kicks and punches and leaps that don't cut together. Ouch, that must hurt. But those weren't even the harshest comments. Slant's Ed Gonzalez's review was so harsh that one might not even want to show their face in public again. According to him, the film was infinitely juvenile. This was an apparent attack on Scott's revelations about him trying to get the audience into the more serious aspect of what he could do as an actor. In short, the film as a whole was a mess, and Scott's stunts were something that got him nowhere but in negative reviews. But to be honest personally, we did like his acting. Anyway, moving on to his 2005 film, which was also pretty much the same as Bulletproof Monk. Bulletproof Monk was forgotten in a couple of years, and Scott was now working on new projects. In 2005, the actor starred in Dukes of Hazard. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as the 2003 film and did make some money. However, critics destroyed this one too. As you can see in its Rotten Tomato ratings, they really gave it only a 14% score. The score is one thing. The site users didn't show any mercy while commenting about the film either. One of the reviews calls it all the wrong words and says that it has no reason to even exist. Not just that, another one wrote that it's the worst film of the decade or a trenchant political allegory, or maybe both. And for Scott's character, Time Out London had an ultimate comment describing his performance as a puppy dog goofing. But honestly, that makes us feel bad about the actor, because he struggled with a whole unwanted genital show at the film set. Apparently, co-star Johnny Knoxville wasn't shy about flashing one or two of his babies. This really made us believe that even if the film was a hit, watching someone's private parts still wouldn't have been worth it. No wonder the Jackass star had to deal with a penis injury just a couple of years later. Sheesh. Following up, the last nail in the coffin was his film Just Before I Go. Oh boy, if we could, we wouldn't have even brought this one up. But this was when things really got bad. In fact, the movie is often regarded as Scott's worst failure as he tried to fit in a dramatic film where his role was nothing like a fun-loving high school boy. Just Before I Go was Courtney Cox's directorial debut, and the plot revolved around a man on a farewell tour before he died. While talking about his role, the actor said that it was rewarding for him to play a role that was pretty much the antithesis of all the roles he'd played in the past. But once again, his own statement became a problem, as the critics really didn't agree with him. Apparently, the movie only made a total of $10,970, but there was something even worse than that. Critics called Scott's acting colorless and tepid. While Variety said that the movie was a tonally disastrous small-town farce, the actor received little to no appreciation for the role, and it was pretty evident that Scott himself wasn't happy with it either. But that happens when your early career only 
only showed your fans one specific type of role. Not just that, the actor isn't quite present at any events. For most celebs, being present at public events is very important, regardless of how much work they're doing. But for Scott, it's different. He's almost never present on red carpets. In fact, fans rarely ever get to see him attend any event. Not just that, while paparazzi culture is so strong, fans have never even seen a picture of him going down the street. Many think that it's respectable, but honestly speaking, it can be very damaging for an actor. The entertainment industry is expanding every single day, and celebrities have to be present in the media to stay in demand. His absence has, in fact, made him very forgettable to the public, and this explains the damage done to all the films he starred in. Oh, but that doesn't mean he has no career at all. Hollywood doesn't hire him as an actor, but we hear his voice often. The actor has a great career with voiceover work. For those who don't know, Scott is a pretty successful voice actor, and you can hear him voicing Crash in almost all the Ice Age films. In fact, he has even voiced the character in the franchise's video games and TV shows. So we can say that even though he's lost his fame, his finances are still pretty much set. As of 2022, his net worth is about $25 million, which explains that he isn't a failure, but just someone who didn't find the right roles in the entertainment industry. Not to mention, this also doesn't mean that he's left acting completely. He doesn't appear on screen very much nowadays, but he did resurface in a couple of sequels in 2017. The actor was a part of Goon, Last of the Enforcers, and Ice Age Collision Course. Not just that, there have been talks that the actor might return in Dude Where's My Car sequel called Seriously Dude Where's My Car. While talking about it, Scott said he'd surely return for an American Pie franchise installment if the script is right. So yeah, he might return to where he started off once again. Lastly, he's totally different from what he looks like on screen. Fans love seeing their favorite actors having the exact nature they have in a particular film or show, but for Scott, this has never been the case. He describes himself as a nerd and someone who was never popular in school. Even as an adult, he rarely ever socializes, so it clearly hurts his fandom. Let's say he could have bagged big movies if only he was more present and hadn't vanished from the scene completely, but we believe he's happy with the life he's living, and it doesn't hurt him if Hollywood doesn't cast him anymore. And with this, it's time for us to wrap this up, fam. What do you think about this video? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll soon be back with more amazing videos. See you at the next one!